probes. Uh, so this gets into a little bit of the architecture of PRTG. So when you install PRTG for the first time, it creates a core server that includes our database, NoSQL. Uh, we've got our own database and own web server built in. Uh, it's 180, 180 meg download. It's up and running in minutes. And all the features and functionality are available within that uh, initial install of PRTG. But if you have a distributed network with different network segments, different locations, data centers, branch offices, you can deploy what's called a remote probe. It's really just a pulling engine that goes into that location. Uh, some of our customers are monitoring other customers or monitoring their clients. And it, that's just one example of many in which they want to have an easily distributed monitoring footprint they can sometimes, they run it from the cloud, they run it from Azure, AWS, or Google, or they run it from their own private data center, and drop a remote probe into each location. What that remote probe does is it queries the devices, the same thing that the local probe does when you install PRTG for the first time. That local probe is your polling engine. It's, your, it's what's doing the querying of all the devices. It's using SNMP, it's using WMI, it's using HTTP or SSH, or some protocol that's needed in order to hook into that device, whether it's storage or an application or server health, NetFlow, uh, listening for different flow protocols such as NetFlow, IPFix, JFlow, SFlow, or doing packet sniffing. So that probe is, is really the way in which we, we capture all that data and roll it up securely into a single point of, pane of glass uh, within the core server. So what, what options do you have with that probe? Is it just sit on Windows? Do you have virtual machines that you can throw up there for that or can you run it on Raspberry Pi? The, the probe runs within Windows, though we do have, we do have a couple uh, mini probes for special use cases. Uh, we've got an Android mini probe as well as a uh, Python mini probe. Um, but the primary use case and the, the full features of PRTG is within a Windows environment. In, in, terms of, in terms of running the software, so we can monitor Mac and Linux, and we can monitor, we're, we're, we're vendor and, and hardware agnostic, so the monitoring end is, is, is neutral it, from that standpoint, but you do, it does require Windows to get it up and running. Is there any plans of moving to like a virtual appliance or an OVA where you're not required to have a Windows box to run the software? No, no, specific, no specific plans, although that is a strong desire of both Dirk and the rest of the developers. Um, we, we hear that loud and clear on a regular basis, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> across the Windows environments, uh, are you up and running on 2016 yet? Yes. The biggest thing about PRTG that, that customers have to get uh, accustomed to is sensors. Uh, everything we do within PRTG is, is based around the idea of a sensor. Uh, sensors encompass everything about a device or an application or a service that you're looking to monitor. So it's really any aspect or element of, of monitoring. So it could be anything from ping to CPU load to memory to disk space to NetFlow to traffic. Uh, on average, a device requires 10 to 15 sensors in order to monitor it. Um, so it's really an a la carte approach as, as you're looking at your infrastructure, as you're looking at the devices that matter to you, maybe it's printers. Maybe you care about toner and paper jams and paper count to looking at a Docker container or maybe a SQL database. And what are the response times? What's the performance of your, of your database? Ultimately, those sensors include multiple data points, metrics. So one sensor does not equal one metric. One sensor equals multiple metrics. In some cases, it's just a handful of metrics, like ping, ping time, maximum, minimum, packet loss. Or in the case of a Dell PowerEdge or an HP ProLiant health sensor, we're looking at multiple me metrics, 20, 40 different metrics sometimes on uh, the main board of a server. And as we'll step into the demo, this will make a little bit more sense, but there's different sensor states. There's Things that are obvious, red, yellow, down, warning, blue. Uh, blue is paused and you, orange is for unusual. And that is related to unusual detection. So from the beginning, from in the point of install of PRTG, we're establishing a baseline across all of our sensors and we're looking for unusual detection. We're looking for anomalies. We're looking for 
unusual behavior. It could be in the form of high ping times or traffic or CPU loads. Uh, we're looking for those anomalies on the network, and within a five to seven day period, we establish a baseline on every sensor, and we're always comparing that sensor with yesterday at the same time and the same day last week at this time. Uh, that gives us the ability to see when things are unusually low or unusually high. So if we were to look at a packet sniffer sensor or, or web traffic or an interface on our firewall or switch, it would, it would tell us if it's unusually low or high, uh, depending upon the time of the week. And, and really it comes down to... How smart is that time of the week? Because if it's Memorial Day, I don't want to be alerted that my network is less busy than usual. Exactly. So there's some things that are so obvious. Can I feed it a calendar? You can. Now, typically, customers don't alert on unusual. It's just insight that they have. So they look at the console and they see, oh, that's in an unusual state. You could be alerted on unusual detection, but typically customers reserve down error states and warnings for notifications. Yeah, because we've all had our pager go off 4,000 times because one thing went wrong. Right. Um, what might not be obvious is pause sensors. Now, you can manually pause something. You can put something into a maintenance window. Uh, one, you know, one-time maintenance window, or put a schedule in for those updates, reboots, uh, system system changes that are going on in the environment, uh, as well as dependencies. So everything within the device tree works off of dependencies. So when something goes down, it may impact a series of sensors, and rightfully so, that we quiet the noise, because you don't want to be notified about everything that's going down on a particular device, if you can't ping the device, it's down, right? So PRTG pauses all of those sensors and uh, quiets the notifications. Let me go back to my device tree. So what does PRTG monitor? Specifically, customers focus on hardware health, uh, performance, and availability. As, as a first step of monitoring. So if they're talking about servers, we would be looking at things like our Dell PowerEdge or an HP ProLine or a Cisco UCS, tying into ad abandoned management ports like an iDRAC or an ILO. Giving us system health on the underlying hardware. So for example, on a Dell PowerEdge via the iDRAC, we can get battery status and temperatures, intrusion, um, voltage, temperature, processor status. Do you support Redfish yet? Red Redfish is the replacement for IPMI that's just out of the DMTF. Not, not familiar with that one. So is that is is Dell and HP or is that kind of a Dell HP Lenovo and Supermicro are, are all signed on okay but yeah it's a new more powerful protocol that will essentially replace IPMI okay now what we're doing with the iDRAC is we're just connecting to that and we're utilizing SNMP so this this is an example of an SNMP sensor where we're monitoring system health on on that power edge just using the iDRAC connection as, as the means to connect to it, right? Ultimately, we're querying it using SNMP. So we're, we're taking in all of this data. We're, we're monitoring perhaps multiple locations. Uh, for example, here within our device tree, we're actually running PRTG out of AWS in Virginia, and we've got remote probes running in Germany. So we're pulling back some of the data center environments from our, our German office using multiple remote probes. It kind of gives you the, the clear use case of a global monitoring implementation where you can run PRTG from anywhere and pull it securely regardless of the type of connection you have to those different sites. So our MSP customers, for example, will use PRTG in, in this sort of way, where they have PRTG running in their data center, and their customers may be spread out geographically all over the world, potentially. And with, ev with whatever you're monitoring, uh, what can you do with that data? Well, the first, first and foremost, that gets to notifications. Uh, what kind of notifications can we generate based upon 
a specific value or state or, or threshold on the device. So that comes down to the different triggers. So state triggers, and you mentioned that earlier, having unusual. You could, you could say on a particular sensor or device, if it's unusual, notify me. Send me an email, send me a text, something like that. Uh, typically that's gonna be when it's down, when it's in a warning state. Or we could do things like a threshold notification where we have specific values maybe on a CPU sensor or CPU load, memory, disk space. With our memory and disk space sensors, we present all the values to you in whole, whole numbers and percentages. So as I go into my memory sensor, I see I've got a lower warning limit of 10% and a lower error limit of 5%. That's, that's the manual threshold, that's the limit I've set for that specific device, for that specific sensor. Uh, um, and with that notification, as long as I have a state trigger in place on that device, I get notified about it. But how do we, how do we move beyond just a basic notification? I mean, the things that you expect are emails, texts, things, things like that. Uh, what may not be as obvious is the ability to integrate with other systems uh, using API calls. What's the underlying API? Is it REST or is it some other sort of API? We do have a, we do have a REST-based API. Okay. Um, but the, in, in this given scenario, what I was kind of alluding to is kind of connecting to other systems. I was and, ask, like, what, yeah. What other systems can pull from this or what can it push to? Or how, do, how is that transfer done? Yeah, great question. With, so if you start with email, an email notification could be much more than just send it to my boss or send it to me or send it to you know, some group within the company. Uh, could be other tools like pager duty or a uh, ticketing system or a CRM or a help desk system, something like that, where the notification gets taken there and gets handled by your own in internal operations. Uh, push notifications work with our mobile apps. So we have mobile apps for Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Blackberry run in Android. Um, so not only can you manage the PRTG device tree from the mobile app, you can receive the push notifications kind of, kind of as a supplement or really an escalation to what a typical email notification would be. And then, of course, what you would expect, SMS notifications using your own soft gateway. Uh, you can also integrate with hardware devices that have their own cellular connections. If you, if you want to have a dedicated device that if the network were to go down, SMS notifications still go out. Uh, you can also tie into other systems using event log entries. So that would be a local event log. Send it to a dedicated syslog server or generate an SNMP trap. Now, what, we, what I was alluding to earlier uh, was the idea of doing a webhook to another system uh, using that API call, uh, something like Slack, Ops Genie, an IoT device, Azure, AWS. So the ability to take a notification, take a threshold, the state of a device or service, let's say we're monitoring AWS and, or maybe a web server of, of some sort, and we want to respond by spinning up additional instances within AWS, EC2 instances or SNS or RDS instances using the AWS API call. Uh, this is the space that you would define those APIs with, with our notification and do something in response with that other system. Uh, and customers use, use Slack and, and Ops Genie for managing those notifications through um, executing the HTTP action from here. And PR2G can also do automation and remediating issues on the fly. So when things go into a failed state, uh, when thresholds are hit, you're executing a command file, a batch script, PowerShell script, uh, some small executable in order to resolve the issue as it's happening. The common example is you know, Active Directory. Global catalog servers are out of sync, run the command to synchronize those servers rather than just get the email about it, try to resolve the issue before or as it's happening. Now, what about uh, the cloud-based version? What, what notifications do you still have text? Um, what, are there phone call notifications, potentially, if, if a text isn't answered? 
what you could what you could do is every everything's available in our cloud version other than some custom script sensors uh, there's some there, there's a few differences but as far as notifications go all that's available uh, through through the cloud, cloud version and integrating with like a voice solution would be either that API call potentially or an email so something that would give the text to that provider to generate the outbound phone call. I don't know if that's kind of, yep. yeah. Uh, we also integrate with Amazon simple notification service messages. And we do have an internal ticketing system. It's not designed to replace a help desk system or uh, a typical ticketing system. It's really to help manage workflow and delegation of responsibility within PR2G. Oftentimes, departments break along the line of infrastructure, networking, servers, applications, and that ticketing system can help with, um, with breaking, up those, uh, breaking up those areas of responsibility. So kind of going back to PRTG just for, for a moment. Do you have a question? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every, every sensor, again, has, has multiple channels. So we can define not only specific limits, but specific messages for those limits so that everyone is notified when those specific error thresholds are set. So if we're, if we're talking about you know, CPU load and when it reaches probably something higher than that, but we want to have a specific error message that says, please check this server, right? And when that threshold is set, when that limit is, is hit, the notification uh, would be generated and the message would be changed on that sensor. Uh, now, as far as some critical sensors for, or some critical approaches to, to monitoring uh, really starts with the data center, looking at power, PDUs, UPSs, and having a central way of, of viewing the status of everything within the data center. And that would also include environmental variables. Uh, so we've dedicated sensors for APC, to look at switch rack PDUs, 